Detroit's attention all cars broadcast 22. Special investigator from the narcotics squad. Working a Japanese dope deal alone. Lay off, boys. That's all. Slow vision quick. Ladies and gentlemen, may we take a minute and dramatize for you an episode that might have occurred at any downtown intersection this morning. We have entitled it Embarrassing Moment. And the cast includes Mr. Jones and the traffic officer on the corner. Listen. it, this is the fifth time today the blame thing has failed this car. Hey, can't you get going? You're holding up about 40 cars. What's the matter? Why, she, she stalled. The fifth time today. I got a new battery. I had the plugs clean and the ignition's okay. Here, I'll help you push it over to the side. Hmm. Ever tried Rio Grande crack? No. What about it? All I know is the boys of the radio cars sure rave about it. They use it in their own cars. Yeah? Well, that sounds like the answer. I'll fill it with cracks right away. And we are sure that Mr. Jones' troubles are over if he switched to Rio Grande crack. For crack powers more police cars and fire engines in Southern California and Arizona than all other brands combined. Again, it is our pleasure to introduce Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department, through whose public spirited cooperation. These police dramas are brought to you. Chief sir. Good evening, friends. It takes courage to be a policeman. Not the same sort of courage which makes it possible for a man surrounded by an army of his fellows to go victoriously over the top to glory. But individual courage, the sort of stuff which makes it possible for one man alone to single-handedly face death. The story we bring to you tonight concerns just that sort of fearlessness on the part of one of our men. A typical illustration of the sort of courage shown by the men who every day protect your life and property. The remarkable story I have brought to the air for you tonight concerns the narcotic traffic in this state and reveals how one man, instilled with the same character characteristics which we demand of all of our police officers, broke up and arrested the ringleaders of one of the largest narcotic traffic rings in our history. Professor Lindsley will now go on with the story. Beware of the Ides of Mark. Such was the cryptic warning received by Julius Caesar centuries ago. On the Ides of March 2,000 years later, that same warning might well have been given to another brave man facing treachery and danger as great as that which Caesar met on the floor of the Roman Senate. His name is Pitwood, and he's a member of the narcotics squad of the police department. On the Ides of March 1926, when our story opened, he and his colleagues had been staked out for two weeks in a downtown apartment house. Twenty-four hours a day, the officers have taken turns listening to the dictaphone, which is connected with the adjoining apartment, occupied by Carolyn Hamer, an underworld contact woman, whom they suspect of being in touch with dope operatives. The two weeks of patient waiting has failed to uncover anything of importance, and Captain Chipwood is rather discouraged as he returns once more to the stakeout. Hello, oh, Gary. Heard anything interesting on that bigger phone in the last hour? Not to me. Hamer talked to a couple of dames on the phone. At least it sounded like she was talking to women. All about some bender they're going on to Caliente. Not about getting a hairdress. Well, I'll wear the cans for a while now. You go on out and get something to eat. Okay, Cap. Well, I hope you have more luck than I did. I'll let you, but I couldn't seem to get anything. Hey, wait a minute. Is she talking? Yeah. There's some 
somebody in the apartment with us. Get a load of this, Gallagher. It's hot. Oh, you will pardon me, Miss Hamar, for disturb you. Who are you? Oh, my name does not matter. What she will do? I am here because it is my understanding that you are in touch with certain people that my employer likes to reach. What's your racket? Oh, my partner has an uh, unusual large shipment of his merchandise to dispose of uh, very suddenly. His usual buyer cannot take all of surplus which he has import on his trip. He is desirous Wait of... a minute. I don't know who you are or who sent you here. But get this straight. I don't have anything to do with dope. Nothing. Understand? Oh, I think you are a little premature, my dear Miss Hima. Oh, don't, my dear me. Dope's out of my line that stays out. And that's final. Oh, please. Uh, dope is not quite word. Uh, let us say, uh, merchandise. I don't care how you say it or what you do with it. I'm out of the deal. Oh, yes, but just think one minute, please. All I am suggesting, you ask friend who engage in our business to buy shipment of $100,000 worth of excellent merchandise. You merely tell him to meet us at uh, 8.30 tomorrow night at corner of 8th and Santi. That is all you do. $5,000 is a lot of money for such service. I uh, Hey. When would I get the money? When uh, you tell me gentleman's name, I shall leave with you $1,000. When the gentleman give us his value business, 4000 more shall come to you. Make it 2000 now. Oh, very well, as you will. You know, of course, that the late and highly uh, revered Mr. George Kraut met his unfortunate death by curious coincidence. Just after he tried leaving town without completing a bargain, she had previously she had previously arranged. Oh, don't try to scare me. I'll fix it. I know a man who can swing the sale. Oh, splendid. His name, please? Jordan. He operates in Hollywood. High class stuff. Oh, excellent, yes. Yeah. And you can trust him. He's been in the racket for ten years. Oh, that is fine. Uh, will you ask Mr. Jordan to be on northwest corner of 8 Santi Street tomorrow night? I will approach him, then ask him to stretch out hand and say, uh, my name Jordan. I will then say, very well, Miss Jordan, I have been waiting for you. That is all we need to say to know each other. 8.30, northwest corner of 8 and Santi Street. Hand out and says, My name's Jordan. You say, Very well, Mr. Jordan, I've been waiting for you. Oh, that is quite correct. And if you meet Jordan and you make the sale, I get the other 3000 Oh, yes, sir. Here. Here is $2,000. And remember. Say, yes, don't worry. He'll be there. I thank you, Miss Hammer. I trust all work out well. Well, so do I. So long. Oh, thank you. Good evening. This evening, very good. Jordan hangs out. Yeah. At Blackie's joint on Sunset Boulevard. Uh huh. Well, beat it to headquarters and get Murphy. Then go out to Blackie's and pick up Jordan. Book him on any. Ch pick up Jordan. Book him on any charge you like and hold him incommunicado for 72 hours. Yeah, but where are you going to be? Well, for a couple of days, I'm going to be Mr. Junkie Jordan. <laughs> Captain Chitwood removes all identification from himself, leaves his revolver behind, and depending entirely upon his wits, he hires a big Cadillac sedan and drives to the corner of 8th and Santee Street. He arrives a little early, parks his car, and lounges on the northwest corner of the intersection. He sees a big car drive up, and an Oriental get out and walk over toward him. My name is Jordan. Oh, yes. Very well. Miss Jordan, I have been waiting for you. Shall we take my call? If you will come with me, please. Uh, we may chat more comfortable inside. Uh, oh. I'll show you. Where are we going? To a more. Going. To a more. 
huge spot, Mr. Jordan. You, you don't mind? No, no. You don't mind? No, no. Block after block and mile after mile, the Japanese drive Captain Pitwood. The ride continues in utter silence. Finally, in an intensely dark spot, somewhere in the east side of town. Oh, Mr. Jordan, you won't mind this. Hey, what is this? Here, wait a minute. Oh, a thousand apologies. I do not like to search one. I feel his friend, but uh, we must be careful. Wait a minute here. Didn't Hamer vouch for me? Oh, indeed, just, but... Well, I can tell you right now, I don't like being searched. How do I know this isn't a frame-up? Oh, it is unfortunate that we must necessarily distrust each other until we are sure. But how long have you been in business with that yacht? About ten years. Oh, I see. You know nothing of stuff we wish to sell? Nothing, except that you've priced it around $100,000. Oh, there has been change in figure. We believe we have made a row. We believe we have made arrangement to dispose of greater part of shipment to a tiny plant of ours. The remainder we sell for $4,000. What is it? Cocaine. Uh Uh-oh. Not so good. Doesn't sell like morphine. Oh, but it is... Doesn't sell like morphine. Oh, but it is... Sell like morphine. Oh, but it is very superior shipment. I'm sure you will agree that it is not uh, ordinary. How much have you got? Oh, 90 ounces lot we wish to sell. $4,000 for 90 ounces? Too high. 90 ounces? Too high. The ounces? Too high. I get small shipments for 20% less than that. Oh, but as I say, this uh, cocaine is much higher grade than you find uh, on the market. The best cocaine on the market isn't worth that price. Oh, I differ with you, Mr. Jordan. But since my employer and I are most anxious to return home, we will concede your point. It happened we have additional 22 ounces. These two we include for four thousand. Well, that's more like it. But, well, that's more like it. But how do I know it's as good as you claim? Oh, possibly we should meet with my partner. Where is your partner? Waiting for us, little further down the street. Again, the winding drive begins. For ten minutes, Washi twists and turns to the neighborhood. Then he parks again, just behind a Ford Coupe. We are agreed then, Mr. Jordan, on 112 ounce at the price of $4,000, providing our cooking sample. Shut up. There's a guy in the car ahead. You want us both to land in the pens? You want us both to land in the pens? Oh, no, I fancy that my partner. Oh. Will you come with me? Sure. All right. Sir? Sure. All right. Mr. Jordan, may I present uh, the Count? How do you do, Count? This is a pleasure, Mr. Jordan, and an honor. We hope to do business with you. I hope to get this set with you, Count. You have been in this business some time. Ten years. You won't mind answering a few questions. Certainly not. What is the source of morphine? It's made from opium. And the source of opium? Poppies. And the difference in the mechanics of using these drugs? You use a needle with morphine, you smoke opium. Are there any other drugs made from opium? Heroin. And you can use a needle on it or sniff it up your nose. Mm. You seem to know your business. I do, Count. My partner, Hwashi, has explained that you struck a very good bargain with him. Your price is too high, Count. I know this market, and I know it cold. I'm paying you a good price as it is. It is a very superior cocaine that I am selling you. Well, I'd like to see a sample before we make final arrangements. Of course. I have one here. Test this, Mr. Jordan. You ought to be careful carrying that stuff around. You never know when you're talking to a cop. Hmm. It's cocaine, all right. It's cocaine, all right. Looks pretty good. I'd like to make a laboratory test with some of it. You may have the sample. Oh, I don't want to carry that much. Give me a pinch to put in my handkerchief here. There. That's plenty. But you are satisfied without the test to make final arrangements? Oh, yes. I can see it's good stuff. Will you bring the money and bills of various denominations? Yes. But I'll have to bring a lot of big ones. I've got my money in a Hollywood bank, and I don't like to ask for that much dough in little bills if it looks suspicious. 
Any way your chores look suspicious, little bill. It would look suspicious. Any way your chores. You will meet me at ten tomorrow morning at ninth and Santee Street. Ten? What is this, a gag? My bank doesn't open till ten. You know that. Pardon. I have made an error. At eleven? I can make it at eleven. Splendid. At eleven tomorrow. <laughs> returns to his office, elated over the prospects of defeating the newly discovered dope ring. Defeating the newly discovered dope ring. The newly discovered dope ring. While he realizes the dangers that confront him if he continues his single-handed attempt to bring the Orientals to trial, bring the Orientals to trial, he determines to go ahead at any cost. He determines to go ahead at any cost. He determines to go ahead at any cost to trap his prey. He secures such funds as the Narcotic Bureau has available for purposes of buying illicit drugs to capture criminals. And with his own savings and some borrowed capital, he amasses about $5,000. This is planted in the briefcase in such a manner as to suggest that $100,000, just that $100,000 has been stuffed into the container. A precaution taken in case the pe- a precaution taken in case the peddlers still have for sale the original amount of narcotics. On the following morning at 11, on the following morning at 11, Captain Chipwood is waiting for the Count and his friends. Of the Count and his friends. A block down the street is a police car. Down the street is a police car watching the trap. Good morning, Count. Won't you get in, my friend? Thank you. You have your car here. Right over in that parking lot. And the money? Here. Look at this. Put it away, my dear Mr. Jordan. You must not show quite so much money in public. One might suspect... Oh, nobody could see it. It is well to be careful, Mr. Jordan. Careful, Mr. Jordan. I will drop you back at your corner. You will take your car and follow... You will take your car and follow me. Okay. But I'd like to ask one question. Are we going far? I'll ask one question. Are we going far? Why do you ask? Well, I came down in such a hurry that I didn't buy gasoline. A hurry that I didn't buy. Well, I came down in such a hurry that I didn't buy. Well, I came down in such a hurry that I didn't buy gasoline. And if we're going any distance, I'd like to pick up some. If we're going any distance, I'd like to pick up some here in town, so there won't be any chance of our losing each other. I suggest that you buy some gasoline. All right. Look, I'll pull into that gas station over there. Then I'll into that gas station over there. Then I'll drive up Ninth Street, and you pull ahead of me. I'll follow you from there on. Very well. <laughs> Captain Chitwood gets in his car and drives into the gas station. Another automobile pulls alongside, ostensibly to get gas. The captain gets out of his and walks to the radiator to fill his water tank. As he does so, his partner, Detective Lieutenant Murphy, gets out of the other car and walks up to him. Don't look at me, Murphy. He's watching. And don't follow us. This is a one-man job. Having stopped the police car from following him, Captain Chitwood drives behind the Count's car on and on through the city, on out through Boyle Heights, into the sparsely settled country toward the valley. The Count twists and turns to throw any pursuers off the track, but Captain Chitwood realizes that there will be no pursuers. He has cut the last line of communication between him and the force. It is up to him now. He has his badge and a pouch of tobacco and a small police revolver strapped high on the inside of his leg. On these and his wit, he relies entirely. Finally, the Count arrives in a lonely area and drives over a field toward a steep hill. At the bottom of the hill, he stops his car and waits for Captain Fitzwood. This is Blaze? Yes, Mr. Jordan. But first, I fear. How many times do you have to search me? I told Washi last night I don't carry a rod. So I see, but one must always be careful. Now you and I must drive up this hill in your car. Mm, pretty steep. Still, you can make it easily. I'll try. But lay off this searching business. It gives me the willies. I am sorry. It is 
part of the business. As Captain Chitwood pilots the heavy car up the steep hillside, he sees another automobile parked at the top. The hill surveys all the surrounding country. One could not come within a mile of it without being seen. He mentally congratulates himself for stopping the police car from following him. Then he sees Washi, and with him another Japanese who is a stranger to him. The newcomer is a giant in size, six feet tall with tremendous bulging muscles. The captain suddenly realizes that difficulties lie ahead. They park the car and meet Washi and the newcomer. You know Washi, Mr. Jordan, and this is Koto, a friend who can be very, very helpful in many ways. <laughs> It looks like he could eat a regiment. Speak English, Koto? Oh, sure, speak English. Oh, yes, speak English. Well, that's fine. Glad to meet you, Koto. Very glad to meet you, Mr. Jordan. Very glad. Now, before we conclude our little deal, I would like to know if you could handle some more of my business in this territory. Not right now. This is eating up all my capital. I do not mean now. As soon as we have finished with our bargain, I return to Japan. But each two years I come into your city. I like you, Mr. Jordan. I would like to do business with you. But could you handle the business I would bring? How much? I would like to bring for you each two years about one million dollars worth of merchandise. That's a lot of money. Because you take it in one deal, you save a great deal of money. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a good proposition. You risk only one purchase instead of many. And I am very careful. You need never worry over the authority. Sheer accident might mean disaster, but that is all. One delivery, a low price. The finest of merchandise. What kind of stuff can you deliver? This cocaine is all right, but... I know. It is morphine you wish, is it not? Mm -hmm. There's a better market with morphine, quicker turnover. Morphine I can arrange very easily. If the deal counts, with this provision, I can't handle all the stuff myself. I'll have to form a syndicate to buy the shipment. Of course. I will not make my next trip here for over a year. But when I do... When you do, you'll find a market all set up for you. Mr. Jordan, you are a good businessman. I have to be, or I'd be out of the business quick. It is agreed, then, for the next shipment. Right. Good. Whitey, okay. take Mr. Jordan's valise and count out the money. Koto and I will get the merchandise for Mr. Jordan. Can I help carry it? We took the precaution of hiding it down in the grasses. We will bring it up now. Whitey, okay. have you the valise? This is in Mr. Jordan's car. I will begin the money counting. <laughs> As Swashi begins counting the money, the Count and Koto walk down the hill toward the high grasses, where they have hidden the dope shipment. Quickly, Captain Chitwood opens his tobacco pouch and takes out his police badge. Then he reaches down and grasps his revolver from the secret holster on the inside of his leg. With the badge in one hand and the revolver in the other... Oh, Count! Yes? Better come back here. You've made a mistake. A gun? What is this? You are joking, Mr. Jordan. No, I'm afraid you tried to sell your merchandise to the wrong man. But this is ridiculous. There's the badge. Hurry. Get your hands up, Kodo. Stand back there. Watch it. Oh, yes, please. Get out of that car. Oh, yes. Yes, all right. Come over here. What for you are calling me, please? Come over here. Oh, I understand. I think this hijacking job, Mr. Jordan. No, it's an arrest. My dear Mr. Jordan, this is all a terrible mistake. You do not realize who I am. My connections, both here and in Japan, are irreproachable. Count, you're selling dope. That's all I need to know. You're a criminal. And regardless of friends or connections, you're going where all criminals go. I don't think so. Think anything you like, but keep your distance. Never mind the chatter. Move along ahead of me. Come on, i got to be at headquarters in an hour. I wonder... I wonder. Under the threatening revolver, Captain Pitwood forces the three Japanese to bring the dope up and put it in his car. Although he watches his captives with great care, he cannot but feel the constant threat of Koto's great strength. As the car is loaded, finally, he orders the three into the car. Yes, I got them. You are a human being, are you not? Why, yes, I hope so. Mr. Jordan, at home in Japan, I have many friends. 
I have a family. I have great position. You should have thought of that before you started in this racket. Still, you can see how much more this all means to me than to the ordinary criminal that you deal with. I see what you mean. In your work, Mr. Jordan, you do not make a great deal of money. Well, it's not very much according to your standards. A sum such as $10,000 would be quite large in your eyes. It would be very large. I happen to have such a sum within easy reach. Fine, you'll be able to hire a good lawyer with it. I was thinking of making a friend a present. A very lucky man, I should say. You are the friend, Mr. Jordan. Oh, and how do I merit this friendship? You return to the police station with the sad news that your suspect disappeared. Sorry, Count, that's out of my line. Ten thousand dollars is a lot of money. No, you'd better get in the car. Back there, Coto. Mr. Jordan, I will give you one more chance. There are three of us. Coto here is a trained wrestler. We all know jiu-jitsu. Once we are in the car, you will be unable to manage us. True, you have a gun. But you cannot succeed in getting us to the city. I've been thinking about that. Let me tell you, Mr. Jordan, that you haven't a chance. But rather than come to blows with you, I suggest this plan. You will take me alone to town. You will drive me to the bank where I have $100,000 in a safety deposit vault. This you will put in your pocket. With $100,000, Mr. Jordan... You will have peace and security. You will have peace and security all your life. Is it agreed? That's an interesting plan, Count, but I can't accept. Then I fear for you. Oh, don't worry about me. I think you had the better accept the Count's offer. It is impossible that you will arrive in town alive. Let's put it another way. Let's say that it's impossible that all of us will arrive in town alive. I don't quite understand. It's very simple. Really. Don't you see that Koto is the main threat? How much do you weigh, Koto? Two hundred ten. When you count and Washi here are carrying Koto through the fields down to where I can call a police car, you won't be very dangerous. What the what for they carry me? Because I'm going to kill you. You cannot do that. My dear fellow, I can and will do exactly that. Koto, unfortunately, resisted arrest. My duty as a police officer, although unpleasant, was very plain. I had to shoot him. The law is quite explicit on that point. But I'm not resisting arrest. Oh, <laughs> you have no imagination, Koto. Who'll ever know? You will not do this thing. It is fantastic. To show you that my gun is loaded, gentlemen, and that I mean what I say. Must be your way. Must be your way. We played with you, Mr. Jordan. We have been very fair. We have offered you money, wealth. You will not take it, but that is no excuse to murder one of us. I have no desire to kill. But wait, there's one other way. What the way? Koto will lie on the floor of my car. You two will lie on top of him with your heads at my side. If you make a false move, I'll shoot all of you. If you don't, you'll arrive safely at the station. Jamale. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Mr. Whatever your name is, you are the victor. We accept. Into the car, then, and watch your step. This gun is liable to go off by mistake. other covering his uncomfortable prisoners. Captain Chitwood transported the dope smugglers to police headquarters. They were speedily tried and speedily sentenced to two and one half years in federal penitentiary in Leavenworth for violation of the Harrison and Jones Miller narcotic acts. Since serving their time for that offense, the Count has been sentenced to Folsom on a verdict of first degree murder. Koto has returned to Japan and Huashi is a fugitive from justice having jumped bond on a forgery charge. Tonight, my friends, I have asked the hero of our story to speak to you himself. I am proud to present one of the finest officers on my force, the head of the narcotic squad, Captain Chitwood. Uh, thank you, Chief. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there isn't much I can add to the story you have already heard. That's the way it happened. 
I might tell you I'd rather be facing old three Japanese on the top of that hill right now than the and be facing this microphone. It gives me the jitters. There's one thing that I'd like to tell you, though. After we made the arrest of the three Japanese, Lieutenant Murphy, my partner, and I took the dope into Chief Davis' office. Everybody crowded around to see it, for it was one of the biggest hauls we'd ever made. The chief looked at the stuff for a few minutes in silence and then said, Boys, I want to congratulate you. There lies the lives of several policemen. He was right, for you can never tell what a dope addict may do when he is on the jump, as we say. More policemen are killed every year by dope users than by any other type of criminal. Of course, our job isn't only to protect the lives of policemen, but to reduce the dope traffic to the lowest minimum, so that the lives and property of you citizens may be also protected. Our success in doing this may be judged by the fact that Los Angeles is now the cleanest spot on the narcotic map of the United States. Thank you, Captain Pitwood. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, flowers are decking the desert. Flowers are decking the desert with a riot of color. The mountains are waiting to the call of spring. The call of spring. No time in the year when your car can give you so much pleasure. That is, if your car is properly lubricated and fueled for desert going and for the steep grades of mountainside. You can enjoy these beauties to their fullest extent without annoyance if you have Leo Grande cracked gasoline with tetraethyl in your tank. With tetraethyl in your tank. Clean with tetraethyl in your tank. Cracked is made to order for out of the ordinary performance. That is why it is used by more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and motorcycles in Southern California and Arizona than all other brands combined. For the best lubrication, demand Sinclair Opaline Motor Oil. This blended oil is made by the world's largest independent refiner of lubricating oil. Also, it is extra refined, giving it longer life. Sold only in extra measure, tamper-proof cans. Yet Sinclair Opaline costs no more than ordinary bulk oil. To get best results from your car, try a tank full of Rio Grande Cracks and a crankcase full of Sinclair Opaline. Cancellation of broadcast 22. Cancellation of broadcast 22. Our special investigator has rounded up the Japanese dope ring. They are now in custody. That's all. Rolls and quits. This is Frederick Lindsley saying good night for the Rio Grande Oil Company. <laughs> <laughs>